In today's video, we're going to react to some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. You might want to watch this because before too long, you won't be able to watch anything like this. These guys have got their own stratospheric balloon and they've been catching some wild ass images of the sun. Pay attention, y'all. Showing us things that we're not supposed to understand. This is our local sun. As close up as you're ever going to be able to see it. And since the events of April 8th, it has taken on a new appearance. Something quite different about it. I'm going to let it play from here on out. It speaks for itself. I mean, first of all, it's really cool that they have a balloon that's capable of actually going up to space so that they can actually see around. If that's real, that's really awesome, and I would like to have one of those myself. But to me, that just kind of looked like the reflection of the sun just bouncing off of the lens. I could be completely wrong. And also, the planet does look fairly flat. It's probably just due to the size of the planet, but it doesn't look like there's much of a curvature at all. I guess a big question that I would have for anyone that believes in the firmament or the flat earth. Do you think a video like this is real or do you think it would not even be possible to get a device up that high to even get this kind of footage? Because if you have a firmament then this is pretty high up. You would think that if we're in the black zone of space then that would probably be at least the limits of the firmament, right? Let me know in the comments on that one because that one kind of actually piques my interest. Also before we get too far into video I know my background looks a little different. I'm back into my house. I'm not in the office right now. Due to this weather phenomenon that they call Debbie, I decided to take everything that was in my office and bring it into my house because I feel like my house is a much more secure place. So hopefully nothing bad happens. And for anyone that's gone through Debbie or that goes through Debbie, I wish you the best of luck and wish me luck as well. So just so you know, you might see a couple of these videos where I'm in my room with a different background for now. What mysterious structure did this man find deep in the mountains of Slovakia? In 1944, Slavic military commander Antonin Horak was taken to a secret cave after being left for dead in an ambush. Two local villagers carried him away. In the cave, he was told by one of the villagers not to go too far into the cave because it had many steep drops and it was haunted. The moon shaft or moon cave is the name given to a large mysterious object allegedly found by Horak in the Tatra Mountains. The walls in this cave shine like glass and had a bluish black color to them. After entering a small vent, he came to a big chamber and grotto with white stalactites covered in an enamel-like substance. Inside the grotto was a huge cylindrical object or shaft within the rock with strange symbols etched into the surface. Hovac climbed into the crescent moon-shaped object through an opening at its top, tried to shoot at the walls, but it only made green sparks and smoke appear. In 1965, he published an excerpt from his diary about his findings. But what did Horak find? Some have speculated it was a geological anomaly, an ancient copper mine, an entrance to some underground world, the remnants of a lost civilization, or a crashed alien spaceship. Horak would eventually vanish, taking whatever secrets he had with him. This is actually a really cool story, and it makes me wonder, you know, back in the day, if there was any actual extraterrestrial technology that was lingering around in caves or underground systems, and there was villagers that actually were around that time, they probably did think that there was some kind of paranormal event happening or some kind of haunting because they just didn't know any better that that was just advanced technology. Imagine being an alien or some kind of advanced creature that can camouflage itself, but you're still kind of visible. So to a villager, if they see that shimmer of 
someone that's invisible, they would probably think that that's a ghost. I think that's one way to look at it. Let me know what you guys think about this. There was a man who went by the name Earl John Brewer said that there was this cave that was in Utah held different artifacts from an ancient technologically advanced civilization. In fact, giants in this cave. The natives called this cave the Cave of the Great Spirit and then discovered all these ancient copper tablets that had weird inscriptions on them. But people would just started like, okay, John Brewer, you're full of crap. Like, yeah. tell us where this is. He's like, I won't because a couple of years before that was a Lovelock cave incident, right? And that's where the Smithsonian came in. Yeah. All of a sudden, the bones disappeared. In fact, he told this man, one day I was walking to the cave and all of a sudden there's three men standing and they said, we want to show you our city. <gasps> brought John Brewer to this underground city and John Brewer said it was the most technologically advanced civilization that he's ever seen. He says they were able to speak telepathically as well. He said then they just walked and then disappeared and then the entrance to their city disappeared too. But he brought the these copper tablets to at BYU, radiocarbon dated this bark. He said with a radiocarbon age of 5 BC to 390 BC is indeed a an ancient. And people are like, yo, you're full of crap. Wow. Wow, you would think if it's such a highly advanced civilization where they're just speaking telepathically that they would have something more advanced or more technological looking than these copper tablets. What if we only live in the reality where the world doesn't end? Hear me out. What do you mean? How many times has the world almost ended? Uh, 2012, that was one. No, like, think about it. Many, 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 many different occasions, different times, like... How many times did, were, were they talking about nuclear war? They were talking about that shit in, uh, in the 70s, 80s, right? Okay, okay. They're still talking about it now. They talk about it in like early 2000s. They yeah, always yeah. have that, you know? And there are times like I'm pretty sure it got hot. Yeah. Now, what if we only live in the reality where it doesn't end? Because somebody changes the dimension to the reality where it doesn't. Yeah. Like they manipulate our current reality and be like, boom, we're headed this direction. Let me steer us in the right way. Who would be able to do that though? Somebody that can control it. Mm. That's why they're messing up the, the Mandela effects. What if the reason so many Mandela effects are coming out is because of that. Word. So many new ones are coming out because they're steering us in the direction. It's like, oh, sh it's getting hot. I actually really like that theory. That's not a bad theory. What if we do live in a world or in a universe where someone can control the multiverse direction and says, okay, well, this is supposed to happen. Let's steer it out of the way into this reality. That would make sense as far as Mandela effects and different things that alter our perception of reality. It's an interesting theory. I like it. Let me know what you guys think about this one. I've never actually thought of this before. It's, it's pretty fun. The following footage is controversial. It's from a man named Stan Romanet. For those of you in the UFO community, you know all about his story. You know why he ended up in prison and what he was accused of. He is one of the first whistleblowers to come forward and state that he was being terrorized and captured on film of UFOs and aliens. And instantly, he was accused of some heinous crimes, which he claims to this day were planted. So how do we know he wasn't set up from the get-go? He came forward in a time when everybody was denying UFOs, when the government refused to even acknowledge them. And now we know they have come forward and stated there really are UFOs that are not of this world. The following footage is from Stan Romanek, which to this day, I believe he still stands by as authentic. He captures what some believe to be real gray aliens. Take a look at it and tell me what you think.
I don't know about this one. The little alien head peeking over the window and then kind of dipping down is kind of fake looking to me. I do not know anything about this Romanik individual. I don't know if this is made up lore. From what people are saying in the comments that this Romanik fellow is actually a convicted pedophile and a con artist. So I really, I really don't know and I haven't done any research on him. So if anyone actually knows if this is a real video or if this person is a bad person, let me know, because at the end of it all, I'm pretty certain that this video is fake. Imagine waking up to a security alarm on your phone saying a person was detected next to your car and this thing is walking and touching your car. That's exactly what happened here. This person has a security camera facing their vehicle. One morning they got a notification around 4 a.m. and this thing is walking by their car and touching it. I'm not too sure what this thing is. It has very elongated arms and legs, and it looks like its head is facing up. Like, directly up into the sky, and it has huge, hollow, black eyes. I tried to enhance the footage so you guys could see it better, along with brightening it and messing with the contrast. What is that thing? It also looks like it has long hair and really long feet. It's just pure nightmare fuel. I don't know, the video looks fairly real, but it also kind of looks just like an elderly woman maybe, just hunched over and just trying her best to walk with a cane, maybe using the vehicle as like a, a stability device. But it is pretty freaky looking, and I would be a little concerned that someone's messing with my equipment or my vehicles out there if I seen that on my cameras. This ancient technique will help you remember anything by constructing a building in your mind. The method of loci is a mnemonic technique that is used for improving memory and learning. It is also known as the memory journey, memory palace, journey method, memory spaces, or mind palace technique. It uses visual representations of known places to help remember information better. It was used by ancient Greek and Roman scholars like Cicero and Quintilian. Many memory champions use this method to recall faces, numbers, and word lists. Let's try it. You can build on this with more practice. Close your eyes and start by memorizing the layout of a building, a street, or any place with distinct locations. Start off simple with maybe your childhood home. To remember a list of items, you imagine walking through the home and assign each item to a specific room by forming a mental picture. When you need to remember the items, you mentally walk through the rooms again. And each room helps you trigger your memory of the associated item. You can get to the point where you can have various mind palaces for different concepts you need to remember. According to Roman legend, Simonides of Sales was the inventor of the method of loci. He had to remember the layout of all the guests who were crushed to death after the building at a banquet he was attending caved in on everyone. It was because of him they were able to identify and bury their bodies. Oh, what a tragic story at the end. I didn't expect that. But the overall idea of having a mind palace is kind of nice, and it's not so far from being doable. I can actually imagine a house or a family house and going through it, and then I can just fill that family house with a bunch of my stuff that I need to remember. But the problem that I have with it is I can't physically see it in great detail and that kind of throws it off for me a little bit because yes I can imagine the house I can imagine the street I can imagine the things in the house but when it comes to picking the thing up and reading it I can't read it because I can't remember everything that it says you know and that kind of that kind of ruins it for me let me know if any of you have this ability because it's a really awesome thing if you have the ability to store things in your mind like it's a house and actually go through it read things like if they're in files and it, that that sounds amazing so let me know if you're capable of doing this in the comments because that just basically makes you a superhuman in my book speaking of patents though in hurricanes there is a patent using sound waves to manipulate hurricanes and tornadoes this guy named Waxmansky, he came up with using sound waves to quickly evaporate the ocean water mm -hmm. to where it could stop a hurricane it got abandoned eventually because he died weirdly his son died too but then this year another guy came out with a patent almost identical to his and it got approved where it gets weird though he was federally sponsored for the research of this but uh, the other guy wasn't federally sponsored no but, so he just mysteriously dies and this guy comes up with his patent 
it's, it's, it is it's still new, weird. Yeah. But it says people that help sponsor the project, 21st Century Fox, the Walt Disney Company, and the Vatican. Why? And this why, is on why? the patent website. This is on the U.S. patent website. Those are the three big hitters right there. <laughs> it's like, that's so weird. He claimed that the U.S. government is using his patent already. Someone got a screen grab of the radar of Hurricane Barrel heading towards Texas. The swirling weird pattern was captured on one of the radars. I've never seen that. Uh, I mean, you look at that, oh. and then you look at that. That's real. That's real. They really do need to hurry up and get something out there that can combat these horrible storms because hurricanes, tornadoes, all of this, we should be in a time frame now. If we're able to go to the moon, supposedly, we should be able to stop hurricanes. Now, I can understand maybe not controlling earthquakes and things like that, but when it comes to the weather as far as the wind, we should be able to control that at this point. And the sad thing is, like they said, they, they probably already do have this technology and they're utilizing it for bad, and that's why we have the the worst weather ever but i would love the ability to have some kind of device near a city or around your home that like creates a frequency or some kind of sound barrier that pushes things away from you it just keeps things from entering that force field basically i hope this isn't real uh -huh. but it's fucking it's scary what is it like they, they literally see it it's scary bro here look look so this guy is in sleep paralysis and he's been having sleep paralysis so many times throughout the week. Right. So he decides, okay, I'm going to get one of those cameras that can see beyond. It's, it's one of those like cameras thermal. that can thermal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it will be able to show if anything's there, trying to catch a ghost okay. or whatever. Because he's like, why am I always having sleep paralysis? Because it always feels like somebody's pressing on my chest. Usually that's what people feel whenever they have it. Look at this, this video. <laughs> the guys go like this. Right here. Sleep paralysis, something I'm certain each and every one of you has experienced yo. at least you once. You see it? In your life. Yo, yo, yo. So, so you can see his chest moving. As you can see, and then there's, there's like, there's like, there like a figure. It's like a translucent figure, and it's right on top of his chest, and it's pushing him, and then he wakes up after. This mysterious no, 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 no. But you can see, that's why everyone feels like, like pressing on the chest. And seemingly strangling him. Because that's how it's described usually too. Pointed out that there's a lot of oh my god, it's moving. The room as well. This shit is moving. Because you can so, see it on this end and you can see it through the camera. Oh, that's crazy. The actual proof that that demons and it walks away and then that's when he wakes up. Oh, fuck. So it really could be... Yeah. things that you don't see that's actually not a bad idea if you are having trouble sleeping you do feel like you have sleep paralysis or you feel like someone's watching you why not film i don't know if i necessarily believe this video because the entity that was climbing on top of the bed was doing it so human like it almost looked like someone trying to sneak up on the bed but overall the concept of recording your bedtime to potentially catch something like this that's pretty neat and actually not a bad idea. And if this was a real video, then that is pretty scary because that looked just like a regular person getting on top of that person. So uh, it makes me wonder. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that that was a real video or do you think it was a hoax? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I'm really sorry that the video was so short. Right now, it is currently raining a lot in my area. It's not really rumbling thunder or popping off lightning, but it's still a lot of rain, and I don't really want to record while it's raining this badly. So I hope you can bear with me on this for just a couple of days, if that. And as always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.